This video is designed to show a little bit more about the mapping features of Urban Force Metrics. So you can look below for videos on the general functions of what we call UFM. And this will go into a little bit more detail about both collecting the mapping data and then exporting it and using it. So we're going to start with a file. This is a, an actual client file that we have of an inventory. This happens to be in Northern Virginia. And when they are collecting data, they will simply either touch on an iPad interface or an iPhone interface, a button that would show here that says GPS locate, and that will throw in a GPS address. We don't see that button here because we're not using an iPad. We're showing this on a computer and the computer doesn't have a GPS chip and it's smart enough to know, don't show the GPS button if you don't have a GPS chip. But we do have here what's proven to be a much more accurate way of doing things. And this is pretty much how everyone does locations now. We call it visually locate or touch locate. We click on that, it shows a map, and then we can go ahead and click on a specific place on the map, and it will go ahead and calculate that quite accurate latitude and longitude. It's more accurate because we have a Google map that's already geolocated, and even with an arborist's big calloused finger, it tends to be quite accurate in terms of zooming in and touching where the trunk of a tree would be. And we typically see two to three feet accuracy, which is quite a contrast to a GPS chip, which is often 15, 20 feet accuracy. When they do that, it will automatically enter in the address if one is available for that location. If you're in the middle of the woods and you touch it, it's not gonna give an address, but if you're on a street, it's gonna show pretty much where that is, which is very handy for large municipal inventories. So that's how we get the mapping information into the system. Now getting it out is interesting. We have a map that we can you know, look at. This is the one that we are using actually to, to locate the trees. And you can see uh, here, we can even do things like color and label them in different, different ways. But we can also export that information. This is critical because we find that the clients of our clients need to use different programs for different purposes for mapping. They may like to use, say, Google Earth to do mapping and make reports and pretty maps. But they may have a client, say a municipality, that will use ArcGIS. So we need to get this out in an open format that Arc can then upload so their client is happy. The good news is we have an open standard that the industry has really moved to. It's called KML. And we can simply export that. So if I go to the maps page and say export, and I go ahead and call that file, file. Um, that is now taking all this information of hundreds of trees and putting it into a KML file. And here it is, and I can just drag down to Google Earth, and we just did it. Not only did we put in the latitudes and longitudes, but it's automatically calculating these circles that you see here, which are critical root zones and drip radii based on the DBH. Those can be manually entered or those can be done formulaically. I believe with this it's manually entered. Um, and those are even oblong sometimes, as you see here. So that's a, a pretty neat thing. And if I were to click on any of these, you will see the information about that tree, species, DBH, condition, and so on. And all of that type of information is also customizable. So you can decide that a different set of information needs to go in there. And that's easy enough. All of that can then be imported into ArcGIS or whatever mapping program you deem best or your client deems most useful. Um, so that is mapping. The one additional uh, thing I'll note is that the base map you see here, we happen to be using Google Earth. So of course, these are Google's images for base maps. Um, but we can overlay or underlay other base map imagery. And we can do that even in Google Earth. We can take, for instance, a survey that a client has done and import that as a graphic and line it up here. Because surveys are often not geolocated to the Earth, but rather are a series of points relative only to themselves, Sometimes a little rejiggering needs to be done to get them to match up to the map. Um, surveys and GPS points, um, you often will use a different, what they call a projection, so they don't exactly match up. This gives you the tool 
to skew one or the other so that they do in fact match up and can make for some really nice maps. So that's it. Down below you'll see links to additional videos or contact information. We also have a mapping white paper that you'll find on our site where we've gone into a pretty detailed set of explanations and images and graphs to show you how these projections do and don't work for each other. And finally, we've also produced specifically a step-by-step -step guide on how to take other imagery and load it into Google Earth so you can match these data sets up. And you don't need to use urban forest metrics to find that useful. You might download that just because it's useful for mapping information that you do outside of our program. Thank you very much for watching.